Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about CSS color markers of FreeCode Camp. This is the project we're going to build. Okay, we can see in here that we are going to build these three markers here. All right, one for red, one for green, and another for blue. We're going to work with this styling. We're going to learn some things about CSS that are really nice. Okay, and this is one of the projects that we have to do for the responsive web design here in this path. I highly recommend you watching the, the video one and two. Okay, these first two projects that we have because we're going to always be using the knowledge we learned in the previous projects. All right, so let's just start. So like we saw previously, every time we're writing a document in HTML, we need this doc type HTML, okay? And this will tell our browser, so Mozilla, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, that we're gonna write, we're gonna render a page with type HTML that we wrote in HTML. We need the HTML tag and we can give a language. Here we're gonna say English and we can close the HTML tag, okay? Right now we're not seeing anything. So now we're gonna build the head, all right? So the head is everything that is not visual in our code and the body, uh, it's everything that is visual in our page okay so the head we're gonna build the links and the body we're gonna have the things that we're seeing in the page page so here we can have a title and this title is the title of the tab okay so it's the title of the tab we are not able to see in here but we have this tab at some point in a real project we can see now we need to add this this meta tag so char set equals to utf8 Okay, let's see, great. So now in this part, this meta, we have to add uh, this tag in here, okay? Because it's, it's, it will allow us to make a responsive web design. Okay, so we're gonna paste in here and that's it, great. Then in our H, in our body, we're gonna have an H1. And like I said previously, I'm gonna do in here some testings and I wanna show you. Basically the main difference, if you didn't watch the previous videos, we can see in here that basically we have six types of heading, okay? And I'm gonna show you. The types of heading, they are different because of the size in, of the title in our screen. And the size talks about the importance of the, the text in our screen, okay? So for example, here the H1 we have, it's larger and the H6 is smaller, okay? So basically it's heading four titles in our page. And again, according to their importance, all right? So here for the H1, we're gonna display CSS color markers, all right? Great. And now we're going to create a link with our styles.css. So we're going to work with two files here. Like we can see, we have the index.html and the styles.css. And to work with the styles.css, we need to make a link. So we're going to create here a link tag. We're going to say rel equals to style sheet and the href. So this means what is the file we're working here. We're going to use the name of the file styles.css. Okay, so now we create this relationship between the HTML with the CSS. Now we're gonna create some CSS rules for our heading. All right, so now we're gonna do H1. And here we wanna do a text align centered. So here we're gonna see something changing. The really, uh, the nice thing about the CSS is because we can give some styling in our code. Okay, instead of only the regular page, everything white and black, here we can add some colors, change the position, it's really nice. Now we're going to create a div in here that we're going to give a class equals to container. All right. So here class is something that we saw in the previous video. That's basically we're giving a name for the div. So for example, I want to manipulate the div that has name container. So all the divs that I have that have named containers that I gave that I'm calling container. I want to change the, the styling for this specific styling here. So it's really nice to group the styling for different divs that we want to work, for example. So now we have here. Oh, we want, actually, we want this div after the H1. I'm so, so after the H1, we're going to have this div. Great. So far, and one thing that is important, div is just a separation in the page. We're not seeing, but soon we're going to see the changes. And inside this div, we're going to have a div class equals to marker. Okay. And we're creating a new separation in here. We're not able to see, but soon we're going to see the differences. Now, we're going to work with the marker and we're going to give some color. So here for the dot marker, since we're calling it class, we're going to do dot marker. And we're going to set the background color to red. Okay, and let's see here, what do we have? Marker, background color, let me take a look. Okay, nothing is changing for some reason. Uh, now, yes, now that we're going to give a width and a height to a change, so we will give a width of 200 pixels and a height of 25 pixels. We're going to start seeing here 
this marker, okay? This bar here that we can see. Great. Now we're gonna set some margin. So the margin we're gonna put all in the middle, basically. So here we're gonna set margin auto. And when we just use the word margin, it will set in all the directions, in, in the margin left, right, top, and bottom. Okay, so this is pretty much what we need. Then we're gonna give another div, another two divs with class margin, or marker, sorry. And this marker will be the three the three bars that we saw with different colors. And here they are they have the same color, but we're gonna change. Okay. Now we're gonna change here the margin to 10 pixels auto because the 10 pixels, this first when we use 10 pixels auto, the first position is talking about the vertical alignment. So like we can see here, now we have a 10 pixels of distance between each marker, and the auto is about now the horizontal alignment. All right. Now we can give. We're gonna give different classes name. We're gonna give one more class name for each marker. So here I'm gonna give a class one, and if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna use these different classes to change the background color for each case. So we're gonna remove the background color from here, and that we're gonna do exactly what I meant. I said. for the one here, I'm gonna give a background color red. Okay. And now we're gonna create the two and three for to give the the classes green and blue. Two. Okay. And three. Right now we won't see anything, but now. If we work in here, true, we're gonna give a background color of green. And for the three, we're gonna give a background color blue. Okay, so this is pretty much what we have so far. We're doing the RGB, red, green, and blue. Now we're gonna go to the second part. <laughs> I'm kind of predicting everything that's going on. So now we're gonna set this background color, not, not the marker, but now the container. So the container. The div container has these three divs inside, and we're gonna change the background color. So here, dot container. We're gonna do a background color uh, to black. So we can write the word black, okay? But in this case, we wanna use the RGB 0, 0, 0. So it's another way that we can use uh, colors. We can use the word black, or we can use the RGB, red, green, and blue. And the RGB, we can use numbers from 0 to 255, and if each position represents one color for one grade, and one gradient for each color. So for example, this first position is for red, the second for green, and the third for blue. If I put here, for example, 255, it will be all red, okay? And the other zeros. If I put here 255, it will be all green, all right? And the other zeros. And if I change here to 255, it will be all blue, all right? So it's really nice that we can use numbers from 0 to 255 to change. If I put everything here 100, I'm not sure what color it will be. It's gray, gray, okay? And we can play around. Depending on the color we're using here, it will be a different color, okay? It's really nice because we can play around. But for black, it's 0, and for white, it's 255. So if I put here 255, it will be white, okay? But in this case, we want all black. So here, all 0, okay? It's pretty nice. We're going to play around a lot with RGB because it allows us to use more colors. So like I said here, let's use the RGB. RGB here. And again, for red, we need to do 255, 0, 0. So we're saying we want the maximum color for the, the red, but we don't want any number for the green and the blue. And we're going to do the same in here. So RGB, 0, 255, 0. Okay. And here, RGB, we want 0. 0 and 255 that will give us the maximum color of blue that we have in here right now we're gonna change the two we don't want to use this green because it's too much we want to change here to 127 so basically here we have 127 for the green okay and if we click here to go next so now we're gonna work some padding we're gonna expand here the size of this box so we're gonna say padding and we're gonna we want 10 pixels for the top bottom and we want zero for the other parts. So in here, we're gonna use this way. Let's see, great. Now we're going to change here for, uh, we're gonna set the green back to the maximum value for some reason. I think they just wanted us to play around a little bit. Now we have the green here again, great. And we're gonna change the container here and we're gonna set red, green, and all to 255. I already told you how it works, but if we set everything to 255, it will be all white, okay? So no color, it's black like zero, 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 it's black, and the maximum 255, 255, 255, it's, uh, it's white, okay? Now we're gonna work with some secondary colors. So here we're gonna combine the poor red and the poor green. So here we're gonna use 255 for red and 255 for green. And now we're getting yellow. So red and green, we have yellow. Okay, nice. In here now, we want poor green and poor blue. So green and blue, we're gonna have this uh, light blue, nice. And now if we use uh, 
pure blue and pure red, we have this magenta that they're telling, it's like a, a pink. Okay, so these are secondary colors. But like you can see, they don't want us to use. So here, if we play around with 127 instead, now we have orange. These are their tertiary colors. It's really nice that we're playing around. I'm feeling like when I was a child <laughs> and we were playing with uh, colors. Here we have this kind of green when we change everything to 127. And if I change here to 127, it will be violet. Okay, so far so good. But now we want to set uh, red to 127 and here to the maximum color. And we have this green. Here we want to set for azure. Now I'm not sure, we're working with more than tertiary colors. Here we want to set the to green to 127. I don't think they want us to change. And blue for the max value. Great, nice blue. And here we want to set here and here 127 and we got this pink i like these colors <laughs> for me it will be the best but they don't want us to use and now what are we going to do we're going to just the rgb function using background color for each element so we want to set everything to pure black so let's set everything to pure black i think this is what they want us to do okay and here, zero. Let me see if this is what they want us to do. Yes, correctly. So we were playing a little bit with the colors, okay? Now we're gonna set the maximum, the red value to the maximum and to produce a pure red. So here we're gonna produce the pure again. And then for the green and blue, and for the two we're gonna set green and blue to 155. And let's see. Okay, we're producing this CN. It's like a blue, perfect. Now we're gonna change the background color of the H1 to this CN that we did, this blue, different blue here. So uh, background color here, I'm gonna set RGB, 0, 255, 255. Okay, and now we have this, great. Then we're gonna change the background color to red. So here we're gonna set the one to black again. And here we're gonna set the background color to red. I'm not sure what why they are doing all of these mixings, but I think they want us to play a little bit. Okay. And now we're gonna set the two to black again. So here we're gonna do zero again. All right. This is pretty much what we have. Actually, they give me some explanation. You should read it, but right now I'm just doing these steps. Now we're gonna remove the background property of the H1. Okay. And we're gonna work, and here we're gonna change the class one to red. All right, so we're not going to give the name one anymore because it's always good to give names that are that make sense to the purpose of what we're doing. So here we're going to use red and probably now we're going to change to color red. So 255 and we're going to do the same for the other one. So here we're going to call green and blue. Great. And we're going to change now the color for green and blue. So here green and here blue. And for this case, I'm going to do 255. And for this case, 255. Okay, I think I probably I did too much. Oh, yes, I did too much. They want us to let here zero. It's okay, we're going to change right now the colors. So now, actually, we have other things. We don't have only the RGB, but we can also work with hexadecimal colors. And basically, the hexadecimal colors, we use six numbers here, not only numbers from... So digits from zero up to nine, and then the letters A up to F or H, I'm not sure, F, perfect. So basically, we have... We can use this hexadecimal to create the colors, all right? So like I said, we can, we're gonna use hexadecimals and each pair of number represents our red, green, and blue. So for example, the first two places, uh, because we normally use with six places, the first two are about the red, this, the next two are about the green, and the last two are about the blue, okay? So if we wanna use the hexadecimal here, we need to use a hash, you can say zero, zero for red, F, F, F is the maximum, zero is the least, F is the maximum, F, F for green, and zero, zero for blue. So this will make the green, okay? So here's the same idea as the RGB. Zero is the minimum, but instead of 255, the maximum, now it's F, F, okay? So as I mentioned here, they're explaining that zero is the minimum, and F, zero, zero is the minimum, F, F is the maximum, like we have in the RGB. And here, if I change to seven F, it won't be that green, but it's still green, okay? 
Now, besides RGB, the name of the color, or hexadecimal, we have the HSL, okay? It's another color model where we can use numbers from 0 to 360 for this hue, that is a percentage from 0 to 100 for saturation and a percentage from 0 to 100 for lightness, okay? This HSL is a little bit complicated. For me, it's really hard to, especially these colors, I don't like much to try to play around with my mind. I normally search for the color that I want or I use a color picker. So here you can do the same. Okay, but it's important that you understand how it works. So for the HSL, what do we have here? We're gonna have 240. We're gonna set the hue to 240. We're gonna set 100% for saturation and 50% for lightness. Okay, and now we have this blue. All right, let's see, great. And we can kind of play around with the same, with this uh, HSL, whatever you want. So you can select what is the color grid that you prefer to use, okay? Now we're gonna set, start learning how to do not only how we're gonna display the color because we can display the color all in the same way or we can have some gradients like a, a line, linear gradient or a radial gradient. So basically